Yeah, people. <laughs> session two is in. <laughs> Why is everyone so quiet? All right, session two of therapy is here with the coup. Hello. Did one say hello? Hi guys. Hello. Listen, every time we start, I do not, I do not know what to say. So you gotta tell him we're a man down. Yeah, man down today. Just three of us in there today. So the coup is a man down. We're still fighting. Now send some special love to Hammer because he wasn't actually feeling well. Although he is away, he has actually been feeling a bit sick. So <laughs> I don't feel too sorry for him. He's on holiday. He's in sunny Morocco. Yeah, but he's sick. He... What were you like when we were in Sierra Leone and you got stomachache? Oh, was your stomachache? In Sierra Leone. I just dropped a few hot ones and I was ready to go. Oh, man. allow it. I These hot ones are But hot. you have to drop hot ones in the dark, not electric, with a <gasps> candle. So you could you could like burn your True. pubes or something. You Why know? would you have the candle that like, close to your... <laughs> By accident! <laughs> Do you know what though? In Sierra Leone, they had that. They had some next fanta. That's why I had. That's why I was in the toilet. <laughs> they got some cake. next fanta. It's not. It's because it's of the sugar. What you cake. took fanta to the toilet? No, no, no. I was. Just... <laughs> Can I just say one thing? Have you actually introduced us? Yes. Yeah, so we're the coup, and this is therapy session two. Every week, or every time we have a session, I'm supposed to introduce us, but I do not know what to say. I just say something weird every time. So every time I'm going to say something stupid. So forgive me. Before we get into it, just want to let you know if you want to get through to us, if you want to. Send us any questions or requests or have any topics you want to discuss with us or just to shout us or to disagree with anything we're saying, you can get at us at on our email address, which is the real coup. This coup spelled C O U P. So that's the real coup at gmail.com. We've also got a YouTube channel so you can listen to all of our podcasts on there. And it's um, the coup London. We've got a Twitter page, of course, which is at the real, uh, yeah, at the real coup. Sorry about that. And then our Tumblr page, which is therealcoup.tumblr.com and lastly our Instagram which is the underscore coup get through to us people let us know how you're feeling let us know what you think cuss us do whatever just communicate with us right tell your friends about us tell us about this fan in Sierra Leone yeah so listen so <laughs> <laughs> in Sierra Leone right, they have some next it's like it's orange Fanta but it's it's not orange it's like dark it's deep orange it's so sweet it's because it's made from sugar cane Listen, you get so addicted to that. I was popping them bottles like every, I had like <laughs> I was having ten a day. No lie, it's cheap. It's like fifteen p or whatever. Buy it from the little corner shack. Back it. So I've been. I was backing these banters hard <laughs> every day. That was my alcohol. Everyone was buying stout and all them kind of thing. <laughs> It's just it's, it's beer, beer. In it. So I was back in these fanters, getting the little girls, my little cousins, to go out to the shop to buy me. Give getting them these girls, yeah, girls. Random girls <laughs> giving them change. I was like, go and get me two Fanta. Go and <laughs> come back, back in it. Go and buy your own. <laughs> then, I'd like about a week in, man, I had the I had the worst tummy I've ever had. And you know, when you're on holiday and you get sick, it's like mm. you feel like you're really gonna die. So I was out, and they were. Get, we used to go to this club called Old School. Big up everyone from Sierra Leone who's been to Sierra Leone. He's been free town. If you go to Sierra Leone and you don't go to Old School you or Paddy's, you, ain't, you been, ain't been to Sierra Leone. You ain't been to. Sierra. You ain't been free town anyway. I don't know. Yeah. I can't speak for any other cities, but I'm telling you, those places. Woo! It was jumping. The bo was strong. The booties oh. were big. I loved it. No, man. We're not really advertising. No one's gonna want to go. <laughs> Don't you stop at Pio and Booty. <laughs> but so anyway, so everyone was going out to. I think they were going um, old school, one club. But I was finished. I was on the bed. They all went. I was so upset. Went to the toilet. Dropped two twos. <laughs> Came out, I was ready to roll, That's man. That's comes out like the tap, isn't it? Yeah, it was oh, serious things. Oh, allow me. <laughs> anyway, you know. aside from my fanta, um, this week, um, well, not even this week, recently, there's been some new new events happening, obviously. You know, we've got a real baby. George, I think his name is. Is I was it George? Like a real baby. I was like, someone got something to tell me. <laughs> no, Why are you looking at me? No. Royal baby. <laughs> is his name George, though? Yeah, it is yeah. George. Yeah. George, George, new addition to the royal family. He's going to be our future king. You should know that kind of stuff. Yeah. Who's king? I ain't going to... By the time he's king, I'm, I'm either going to be senile or dead. That's true. <laughs> Unless their family gets wiped out in the meantime, which could happen. Damn, that's tough. I think Harry should be king person. I think that's the truth. <laughs> Harry is the king. I think that is the truth. Oh, that's It'll be amazing. It'll be like, what's the what's the what's the film? What King's Speech? No, 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 no. Is it with John Candy where he becomes king? Uh, hmm? Did I just make that up? Sounds like it. What's it called? 
you know sometimes when you have those really kind of vivid dreams and then you think they're actually like <laughs> yeah but that's, that's random John Candy yeah and he becomes a king mm-hmm. or a prince or something I'm sure I'm gonna google it I'm not kingpin that's the guy <laughs> from Cool Runnings right yeah, yeah. Dude, Uncle Buck ah yeah. oh, Uncle Buck yeah that no. was really I don't remember this film, man. But anyway, if Harry was king, it'd be, I, don't, I don't know. I think I think we'd probably go to war only because some countries or some delegates or some ambassadors would be sending Harry messages and he wouldn't reply to them, nothing. He'll be off somewhere, <laughs> some skiing with some ting somewhere, and then they'll just think it's beef and just send some I don't know some missiles over. Harry something. does get ting. Changing yeah. subject. Yes. Would you allow? Right, I read this thing actually. My mum posted it on Facebook. I'll probably paste it on my Facebook because she wrote my Facebook on a regular basis. Yeah. To the point where my brother who's in Korea has actually blocked her. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, she posts this thing about McDonald's saying that they wash their meat with ammonia. So my question is, it's always the number one thing with girls, would you let your kid eat McDonald's? And like, one of my friends who has a baby, well, a toddler, she was like, oh, he's had McDonald's twice this week. Is that really bad? Is that really bad, Morgana? And I was like, no, oh, it's fine, isn't it? My nanny's taking McDonald's every Saturday, we whatever we want. I ain't gonna try to go into that because people are gonna judge me on my nanny's season. Anyway. Yeah, but you... it was the 80s, so it doesn't count. The 80s, the 90s. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I was still below 10 having two extra value girls, but let's move on from that, please. <laughs> two extra value meals. <laughs> my nan just what do you mean, my two? My nan just didn't have to say no. Like, I'd be like, oh, can I have a chicken burger? And she'd be like, yeah, sure. I was probably like eight or nine. Yeah. And then she'd be like, sure. And then I'd finish the chicken burger meal. And I'd be like, no, I'm so hungry, I want another chicken burger. She'd be like, okay then. And when we weren't having extra value meals, she'd then go and buy us the toys. Well. Hold on, so she just bought you the burger on its own? If I wanted the burger on its own. If I wanted a whole other meal, she'd have bought me a whole other meal. But then the cheek is that after that, I used to have, do you remember when they used to do like, um, it was like a tray, mm, and then yeah. you had the apple pie down the middle yeah, and the yeah, ice cream on the yeah. with the I used to have that after. You was having McDonald's TV dinners. Yeah, basically. Because my mum used to work like full time or yeah. seven days a week so we used to go to my nan's on the weekend and my nan just never said no God rest her soul you were lucky man. man I had to she work for my best. McDonald's I used to go to East Street Market with my mum she used to bribe me in the <laughs> morning the she bags. would come yeah because <laughs> I'd be watching cartoons I'd be watching uh, I don't even know man DuckTales or whatever it is Some she'd be like cats. yeah Tailspin all them ones yeah. Aww, if you, you him. yeah she's like if you don't if you want to if you come with me I'll buy you McDonald's after and I was like oh. My nan used to spoil me. Literally anything I wanted. I wanted Polly Pockets. I used to have Polly Pockets. I've got my zoo. Yeah, Ice I never cream, had them Polly Pockets. Chocolates. You live privileged, man. I never. I used to see those things on TV and never even. My mum didn't know about this though. Oh, she looked okay. crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. Everyone gets spoiled by someone. I remember when my younger brother Robbie was initiated into the food thing, like eating as much as you can. And the first night he threw up on my feet because we used to do that like, top and tail. <laughs> and I was like, welcome to the club, man. Do you know what? Your question was, would I let my if if yeah. based on your stories of McDonald's, <laughs> hell no. I ain't letting my kids go near that. But based on my if, if my kids earn their McDonald's like me, yeah. then that would be Different fine. That would be fine. No, I'm not just gonna throw it at them willy nilly. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness though, uh, it's a tough one, man. Cause like, uh, I don't know. It's hard. Well, I, 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 I know this sounds weird, but I imagine the McDonald's then was better quality. Probably not. Probably <laughs> yeah, probably not. wasn't. To be honest. Yeah. Because the regulations are much higher now. Yeah, I, I guess personally so. would. I like to think that I will. Because the thing is, McDonald's is a convenience food, so you take your kids there because it's convenient. I like yeah. to think that I will be in control and I won't need to take my kids to. You know, I do. Well, yeah, what? It depends you know, on your circumstances. When life catches up with you and you're busy and you're rushed and you I can't, can't prepare imagine. food, can't McDonald's imagine. is there, man. It's the way, it's option, it's the way out. I can't imagine it. I That's really where they make their. It. Like, I don't know, like, everyone's gonna eat junk food at some point in their life. Or, or maybe not, but mm. you do well to prevent your kids ever eating junk food from birth till like uh, 12. You do a very good job. Mm. But I think every now and then, I don't wanna say it doesn't hurt because maybe, you know, invariably it probably does. But I think every now and then a bit of a treat, a bit of a McDonald's, like, you know what I mean? We used to go shopping once a week. And if you got, I never got McDonald's every week. Like every other week, I'd get. Sometimes no, just turn up and carry the bags. You know, you get the lines in your hand. <laughs> the red lines. Yeah, the red lines from. And East Street <laughs> Market so is no big. joke, man. Saturdays, boy. But a treat every now and then it doesn't hurt. But those golden arches. Once a kid's been through them, it's like it's, different, it's isn't like it? mecca. Like oh, let <laughs> me go McDonald's again. McDonald's, McDonald's. It becomes that thing of 
do this oh, for McDonald's. Wait, so you said they spray their food with ammonia, wouldn't they? I think they clean it because oh. obviously they use loads of different bits of the meat. But to get it all one colour, they like clean it and, and like spray it with ammonia to make it all one colour. But what's that other stuff they spray on food that to make it addictive? What, have you heard about that stuff? There's like, some <laughs> monocidium glutamate, maybe? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Mm, that's the stuff you get poisoning. Anyway, it's going in the wrong direction. It is addictive. You took it here, man. McDonald's is addictive, I'm not gonna lie, it really is, and that's what scares me a little bit. I don't think it's. You cool. took it here with your double meals. I don't know. What about if it was your birthday and you were at McDonald's? What, from, well, as a kid? Or a McDonald's party? Yeah. yeah. You didn't have that. Oh, well, <coughs> Imagine, why don't McDonald's ever do a card like Nando's? Get McDonald's something card? Oh, no. <laughs> do you know how sick that would be? Did you know they put the gherkin in the hamburger? to make it a yeah, savoury yeah, yeah, yeah. food. It's so sweet, Otherwise yeah. it would be a dessert yeah. because there's so much sugar in it. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. How does that happen? That's mental. So basically, if you don't have a gherkin, what, you have a strawberry you cheesecake? Have <laughs> How do we start talking about McDonald's? You, why did you do this to us? kids. This is not Instagram, you know. Food everywhere, of course. Now we're talking about it. <laughs> anyway. I hate when I see food all the time. Don't know my pet. Pet peeves. Why? That's another story for another day. It just makes me feel sick instantly. Like instantly. No matter how good the food is, as soon as I, you know you're going down your timeline and you just see it, I just think, oh, and I'll change it. I'm surprised not many people have done Instagram videos on food though. That will really drive me nuts. But they just do themselves eating it. I'm no, I've got loads of people and they like do, they show you their starters and their meals and their dessert. And it's not as good. Just the good thing about Instagram, it makes food look really nice. Video looks whack. <laughs> it's really bad. I think they need to stop doing that. So what would you do? You never said anyway. Would you let your kids eat McDonald's? No. What? Like, never. No, I don't think I would. I can't imagine taking my child sitting down and only because I. Well, like do... it's a meal, like some people do. Yeah, like you see that um, that um, the whole thing that I read on Jane Miller that kind of changed my mind a little bit, and I did start to think it's one thing me eating it, but me bringing my child and sitting them down and being like. Mm -hmm. Chicken nugget that is like chicken foot, chicken batty, yeah. chicken yeah. nose, okay, chicken yeah. eyeball. When you put it like that. And it is that. If that's not hype, just give them chicken. That is it. It's processed chicken at the end of the day. Yeah. That's the thing. I don't know if I could. Uh, I don't know. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I mean, I, you know, the responsible thing would be to say no. But I think it depends on your circumstances. Well, definitely, I mean, certain demographics are going to spend more money in. McDonald's than others, like, I can't imagine most people who, uh, I guess everybody's going to have McDonald's at some point, at some point yeah. you can't imagine, you know, the upper class taking trips down to the local McDonald's, where would they go for starters? Kensington High Street, Street McDonald's? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly what I was going to say. I think raising kids, like, we always have this kind of hype, like, in your mind, oh, I'm going to do this for my kid, I'm going to do that for my kid, and then you have them and it's different. It's completely One different. One of the things that's come up a lot is, that like, kids using iPhones and iPads and stuff like that and how good they are. But like, I've seen kids, like, one and a half just working those iPads. Like, <laughs> hey, our nephew, our nephew <laughs> uses one. Right? See, He's one two. of my friends is really against it. One of my friends, her son uses it. Like, and it's good because you give it to him and he's just like doing his own thing, never got to bother about him. But then some people are like, no, 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 that's not right. I don't know, it depends how you look at it. I think if you're scared of technology, then you'll look at it like like it's the devil. I mean, like, because I remember when I was in school and um, memory sticks first started getting used. Do you remember? Do you remember that? In, I mean, in schools? No, I don't even remember that. Okay, well, I remember. I don't think I was in school when that happened. Yeah, yes. I was. Yeah, you must have been, because I was. I was in secondary school. Your school must have been advanced. Well, people had memory sticks and stuff. And I remember thinking, like, what? At first, I was like, oh, what is this? This is long. You remember we used to have. Before that floppy disks, yeah, right. Used to say yeah. stuff on floppy disks, and then we had d d we had like um, CDs like... to say stuff. Well, maybe it was when I was working. Yeah, maybe it was when I was working, working at the school. Yeah, but on. anyway, kids had obviously started using memory disks, um, memory sticks, and a lot of the adults were like, "Oh, this is just too much now. It's, you're getting lazy. Why don't you just?" But I think the times change, and if you, I don't know, if you try to prevent your kids from moving with, yeah, with some things, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you don't want them to get addicted to using yeah. it for games and stuff like that, but they have to be familiar with it in case... Okay, alright, then this is a topic. Are you going to allow your sons and daughters to 
play FIFA. Me, <laughs> I am not down for that. Oh, behavior. don't get don't get me I'm started. I'm not down for that. If Wait, I don't let my don't child play FIFA, FIFA, I'm the biggest hypocrite in the world. <laughs> but, I could bang out eight hours of FIFA a day. You would so let your child could, do that. How can I turn around and say you can't play FIFA <laughs> when all I've been doing all day is playing FIFA? Stop picking Barcelona. It's my game. But don't you think it kind of it my kids can play FIFA as long as they don't beat me. No, come on. Because if they beat me, I'll beat them. But don't you feel like, you see that ability to sit in front of a thing and kind of... Hey man, that football, takes dedication, man. Don't knock it. It doesn't take... It, it takes is concentration. Like, it, it, it's kind of like a, a sedate dedication. A kind of, what's that, what's that hey, word? Hey, hey, it's a skill. Is it a skill? FIFA's like... Can you use it in other things? Skills have got to be transferable. They can't just be... Like, People make a living from it. Yeah, but you're not making a living from it. That's, I'm just getting abused. That's the, <laughs> that's the way we let off steam. Like, I don't know, like, computer games, come on. They, they... So, hold on. Your five-year-old son probably would know how to play FIFA. Are you going to let him sit? Like, so, mum's in the kitchen cooking. Are you going to allow your kid to sit no, down on FIFA? No, because when I was five, I wasn't playing. I didn't, I didn't have a console. So, that's the point. Are you going to let your kids Not a five-year-old kid, no. When will you buy your kids, like, a PS3 or PS5, whatever it will be in the future? I reckon, I reckon, I think when they're... I don't know, you're looking at eight nines upwards. Eight nines? Yeah, that's, that's I about that's right. A... I never ever sat in as a child and played anything. I, anything. Did, I didn't have no consoles until I was in secondary school myself, but I'm saying... The only time that I sat in it, my mum um, somehow removed all of the TVs from our house. I'm not going to go into that. But we didn't have a TV for a year in my house. We went from having like five TVs to having no TVs. And I'll tell you what it was, the oh, first no year, ground. the first year of Big Brother. Do you remember when Big Brother first came out? Yeah, yeah. That first year where I didn't have a TV. And my friends would ring me up and go, Morgana, are you watching Big Brother? And I'd be like, yeah, it's really good. And I'll be sat there in front of the computer playing um, Sim City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Go, go, bye. And I got the phone or they'd be like, oh my gosh, the ferry is on TV. Pick up the phone, have a, pick up and put the TV and watch it. And I'd be like, yeah, um, my brother's watching TV and I can't get to TV. <laughs> bye. <clears throat> and that's the only time that I ever spent in front of a computer. That's because we never have a TV. And I was watching um, Sim City. But then saying that, I guess, although I wasn't sat in front of a computer game, I was sat in front of the TV a lot. Sorry. It's a balance, man. I played a lot. Of, when I was younger, I played a lot of computer, but... I played outside a lot. Obviously, I played football non-stop. I used to be in the park playing football from ten in the morning till ten at night. Mm. That was my that was my thing. Yeah, that was my advice. That though, yeah, it's I think. Kind of different now. You'd be worried. You'd be worried. Yeah, the environment if your has changed. Kid was out for that long. The environment has changed, but then also, I think it's it's definitely more of a balance. There, you know, technology has come on a lot, so I think it's only right that people use it more because mm. there's more things you can do with it. Like when we were. Growing up these times, internet, but there was none. Mm. Now there's so much they can do, so much they can access through the internet, for good and bad. Like there's a lot of things you can get off the computer, off internet, which is fantastic. Like in schools now, you can do a lot of learning programs through internet. But look at this, like this Ask.com thing that's happened to mm. a girl. Like my thing is, you know, kids love to lie. I remember when my mum first found out that I, that I lied, and she was devastated. She couldn't believe that I'd actually lied to her. And every time she like she went mad at me, it was always like. You could just lie to me, blah blah. Because me and mum are so close. So when she realised it could happen, she was like, and I'm like that. I'll take people on face value. Then when you find out they're lying, you're kind of like, oh my goodness. The illusion's gone. Exactly. And your teenager will do that like it's nothing. And I just worry about like kids being on certain sites and just sat on the TV, sat on the computer doing whatever they want. <laughs> I just think it's just crazy. And I don't know whether I will have like my kids will have laptops in their rooms, TV, TV in their room. Um, now I love like and all that kind of iPhones and all that malarkey I don't know it's tough man I, but I'm saying like, I, I don't know man like you have to monitor I, you have to monitor what they're doing to a certain extent you can't be standing over their shoulders whilst yeah, they're on the sure. internet watching what they're looking at mm. but I think definitely uh, you're right I mean I wouldn't want my kid to be stuck in a room on the internet all day no, no chance I need, they need to go out they need to get out and be active and actually socialise with real people but I wouldn't want to put in their head that the internet is the mm. devil because it's not but it's about how you parent it's about yeah. how you parent this, this whole situation right? I think what I'm trying to get at is would you guys raise your children like how you are like for example just say your son or daughter turned around and said oh dad I want to be an actress and I don't want to go to college I don't want to go on to uni I'm going to go and try and be an actress or an actor and imagine your daughter's proper hot as well. 
Not that you should be judging your child that she's hot. <laughs> you know she gets <laughs> a little okay. change. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, you're buff. <laughs> and when she's not buff, and you're like, oh, don't worry, go ahead, because you know she ain't going to make it. You're like, yeah, go, babe. You can do it. You can do it. There's always the space for the ugly, funny girl, so. <laughs> yeah, let's face it, our kids will be funny. And buff. You say that about your own children. Yeah, my son, listen, my son's going to be a handsome mandingo. I might just call him Django. <laughs> <laughs> I might just call my son Django, man. Why not, man? Please do that. Listen, oh, my God. My son's going to be Django so buff. You know what I'm going to do to my son? I'm going to make him, you know them vest tops? You know the, them 80s tops where the sleeves are rolled up? My son is going to be wearing them little vest tops with the sleeves all up. What you do. Like I remember what I do. when we used to work in the, the cinema back in the day. He used so to put roll like, my sleeves up. I still do it now. You I'm doing it right now as we speak. That's, this is actually going to happen. Yeah. This what, is, what he's, he's describing here right, right now. My son is gonna actually going to happen. Do you know what? And so every so when I go to pick him up in school after school, and I see I'll be looking at the kids running around the playground. All I got to do is look for the kid with the sleeves rolled up. There's my son. Probably standing in the middle of the, of the playground <laughs> staring at other kids. I want to see them Popeye arms coming out. Feel me? How should I keep, you reckon you've got Popeye arms? What Sorry makes, guys, you can't see right now, but trust me, man. man. I look hench right now. We need now. to start pic- um, taking pictures and posting them. No, 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 they're not ready for that yet. That's later on, because then we'll just start getting bare hits. Right, so your kid don't want no extra education of any type. He is ready to go out into yes, the world Kimmer. and do his thing. Well, since you say you're an actor, let's, why don't you answer first? But there's no evidence of him being able to act. He didn't even do GCSE <laughs> drama. <laughs> no, that, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. That's just thing, completely the right. Only, the only girl. thing he does is watch his thinders a lot. <laughs> no, you changed this question. No, he'll watch it all weekend on a Sunday. He'll watch the so, omnibus. So I've never seen my omnibus? child. Omnibus? <laughs> omnibus? <laughs> so wait, I've never seen this child act. This child only watches EastEnders. <laughs> Comes to me, uh-huh. Daddy, I want to be an actor, stroke yeah. actress. <laughs> why would your boy want to be an actress? Well, why is he anyway, going to be okay, a son? son I'm saying daughter, son or daughter. daughter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's, when, that's when you've got to go Will Smith in Pursuit of Happiness break it down to him give him the stats and the figures do you mm. remember that scene mm. when he said he wanted to be a basketball player I just yeah. said yeah but I didn't I, just, I didn't watch it I'll tell you why I read a lot about that film and I just thought it was idiotic I thought and a lot of people have gone in on me about this but if you haven't got any money that you're sleeping in a cubicle for your son why is your main priority getting this top job just go and get a job why is he making his son sleep in a toilet <laughs> To be honest, Morgan, I'm not going to lie, it kind of worked for him. <laughs> I'm just saying. But his child is now scarred Man. with the memory of sleeping in a public toilet cubicle. His child's rich. His child don't care. He probably he probably had a room that was based on that cubicle. But he never knew it was definitely going to happen. No, but that was in belief, though. It worked out. He you know when things work out, you don't care how you got them. But I hear what you're saying. Um, I care about the child, the infant child that was the child, sleeping in a toilet. You, can you look know you catch that. polio from feces. <laughs> the child can have a look at that, man. I wonder where you got that from. The child can look at that, man, my dad made me sleep in a cubicle, man. I hate him. I'm rich. Or the child can say, man, my dad was dedicated. He would work so hard. We even slept in cubicles. I'm rich. Yeah, it's how you spin how it How you going to look at it? You have to spin it, man. So, back to my point. <laughs> your son or daughter wants to be an actress full Kimo. time. Chemo. Keep in mind, they ain't got a job to be paying you no rent when they're all leaving school. They're saying, I'm going to be an actor, Dad. See. What you going to do? See later on tonight. <laughs> what you going to do? I, I... Honestly, I'll bring him in front of you guys. I might bring him or her in front of you guys. Improvise a scene. And then you guys can be this the judges. This harsh, man. He's, making, he's putting his child on so the pressure. So when you went to early. your, your mum and said, I'm going to be an actor, what did she say? I'm not going to repeat it. <laughs> My mum's the loveliest person in the world, but I'm not going to repeat on it. No, no, they just always... You know what parents are like. They just always want you to have a fallback plan. Because mm. acting is not a safe profession. Okay, so your kid's saying, you, I'm doing it full time. There's, there's nothing else. Hold on, am I, I'm, I'm I rich? No, you're like you're now. You're just lower middle class, maybe. You've got a job. Your miss got a job. You've got you're a like mortgage. Biff from Back to the Future, but part two, because <laughs> it's future change. Remember, he was waxed in the car. <laughs> yes, Mr. McFly. Yeah, he sh- had a comb over. Do you know what? It's his tail neck and the taxi underneath. Yes, Mr. McFly. Whatever you say, Mr. McFly, that's gonna be you. That's so yeah, your Biff and your son's act. <laughs> yeah. That's your way out, man. What do you mean? You think Biff would have said no about the audition? Let me tell you. Uh, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. I'll be honest. Because I don't want to shatter my child's dreams. Mm. Right. But I don't want to lead them down nonsense. Mm. I'll tell you what I would do. I'll be honest. No jokes. 
firstly, yeah, it's my child's dream. I would encourage them. If this is what they want to do and they're really passionate about something, I want to give them the best chance of succeeding it. However, though, them coming to me and saying they don't want to go to school and they don't like the education and all that, that's, that's a bit worrying because you don't have to have shut off that side of your of, of life just because to focus on what you're doing. What I would do to, like, is the same if they were going to be a musician. If my daughter was said she was going to be a singer or my son said he's going to be an actor, I wouldn't, because they're already seeing one thing most likely at a young age, they're seeing the bright lights, they're seeing the money and the fame, right? Yeah. They're young, it's inevitable. However, what I would do, I'm being honest, and I'm getting a bit serious, but I would, I'd want them to understand the mechanics and the history and the and the, the details of each thing. So if they were going to be, if my daughter said she was going to be a singer, I wanted to learn about you know writing songs, about composing, about music. I wanted to become a musician as well as a singer. Give her, broaden her knowledge, mm. and you know what I mean, give her more of a chance of being successful at it, not just mm. coming to the mic and singing and hoping someone makes a beat for her and hoping someone writes for her. Yeah, but someone you're, thinks you're, she's pretty. You're Biff from Back to the Future. You ain't got. No, that's knowledge. you. You're Biff. <laughs> <laughs> Right. All you're thinking about is I ain't got time. We're gonna have to go to McDonald's. <laughs> One of my pet peeves is blind encouragement when people just encourage their child. That like, X factor. Yeah, do it. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Oh my gosh, she's got such a talent. Yeah, just do it. Do yeah, it no, I, don't, I don't think any I'm of us are that. under any threat of that. No, I think we're, we're, we're pretty real. But there is a point, though. I'll be honest with you. As parents, you have to have blind encouragement at some point, you know. That's the other thing, because you, you, there's always people. One, there's always people that are going, oh, I was in school, I just dropped out, I moved to New York, I became an actor, or I moved to London, I became an actor. Wham, bam. They, you didn't hear them saying, oh, I went and studied anything. This is it. yeah. It's just, I'd just become an actor. Yeah. Either there was, where was their parents? What was their parents? I, I think Durham is lying, though, on what? this blind encouragement. Why? Because I'm harsh. <laughs> but then, is yeah, it, at the same it, time, yeah. you want your mum or your dad, like, my mum, if she said to me, Morgana, I don't think you should do that, I would take that as word. Like, if my mum says to me, don't do that, I know she means don't yeah, do it. Yeah, but it yeah. depends on how passionate that. you are about it, though. Because I, let me say, I'll tell you why it's got to be some bit of blind encouragement. It's because when, there'll be a time, pardon me, there are times when no one is really good at anything. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? Mm. Pardon me. And some, some kids, sorry, I keep burping. Some kids. Oh like are naturally good at stuff and you see it straight away and as a parent or as an adult it's, it's easy to jump on it yeah. and be like well look that boy's really good at football oh come on I'm going to make you start it's easy there's other things that develop later True. so some a child might say they want to be a singer and they're not particularly good when they're eight doesn't mean they're never going to be a singer so at eight if they're not good and I, I go no no, no, maybe we should think about something else. Mm. Patrice. <laughs> Please Tanisha. Child, Patrice. I call her Tanisha. Listen, Tanisha. We need to worry about something else. You might have a singer's name, but it's not going to happen. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Like, but you don't have you think to... one of the worrying things about having a child is that you technically have another life to manipulate? Like, how that per- how that young child is in yeah. 10, 20 years' time is so down, down to, to you. you. I like, I'm, I'm happy. I'm I think that is one of the scariest things. It is scary, and you should take it seriously, but also... I'm encouraged by the fact because I have obviously I'm a bit of a narcissist. Everything that you went that went wrong with me, you think you're gonna fix. And let's I face it, there wasn't the that much. Thing a parent there wasn't that much wrong with me. Let's be honest. I was pretty. I was like Lex Luthor. This is, this is a, <laughs> I'm, like a I'm a criminal mastermind. No, but what I mean, not by wrong, as in what's wrong with you, as in maybe what you didn't get. Is what I'm talking about. You can give to your child. So See, the areas that you didn't get, whatever it is you could, you wanted, or but don't you needed. think that's what your parents went out? Not saying that you are a joke. Well, yeah. <laughs> don't you think that's what your parents thought? Like my mum always tried to tell me. I quit. This is what. I quit. This is what I did. I quit. Okay, just Anyway, my mum always said, "This is what I'm I down. did. This is the problem. You shouldn't do this." I saw what I did it and had to learn for myself. You I look, think yeah. your mistake, yeah. you have to make your own mistakes. You can't listen to a parent. Oh, no, so when you're telling your child this, this is it, your child's got his own mind, it's going to do what it wants. At, when it gets to a particular age. But up until that point, your child is like completely in your care. How you speak to that child, how you don't speak to that child, how you physically touch that girl, the child, or doesn't or don't touch your child, like is in hitting it or not hitting it. It can sh- you're shaping another being. Can we say he or she? He or she. He, she. He, I she. think it's amazing. But like, throughout my life, my mum is my number one reference. Literally, even when we haven't been talking, my mum is literally like the centre of my mind. She because I feel like I am like her creation. I've come from her. I have my own mind. I, think I make amazing. my own decisions and blah blah blah. But I love she it. is my source. I think it's good, like, don't you think but I think we think about my mum obviously is a single parent, so 
she wasn't thinking about everything she did or everything she was having influence over me with a hunt like 24 hours a day she wasn't thinking mm. I can't do that because she, like, she wasn't mm. there was times when she was natural and you see sometimes when kids act like their parents mm. and you look at it and you think wow that's that's uncanny how like they are mm. and then other when it's when it's good instances you're like oh that's she's just like a mum and then when it's something bad we're like oh he's being taught something wrong mm. at home but it's not that it's that the parents are after a while they you know they go into autopilot and they're mm. being natural mm. and the kids are just a lot of the time kids copy they yeah, mirror they what you're doing everything that mm. they so then I guess it depends on how you are if you're someone who in the house is effing and blinding and hate the world mm. without you know even trying that's, your child's going to come out that because your child's going to copy you and you're going to input that in your child definitely so I guess for us who don't have children yet it's, mm. it's a good it's a good thing to think about because basically how you are is the, how I am there's no way I can be a certain way and then bring up my child to be a different way. Mm. It's not going to happen. I can put up a front and raise my child with you no know, differently mm. for a while, mm. but then the natural side of me will come well, out. This is what I'm saying. This is what, like, what you said. With you, you say, "Oh, I'm gonna like if my child wants to be a singer, I'm gonna get to do like, research and blah blah blah. They have to write this, that. Mm. Like, there's things that you're good at mm. that you should have done more research. You should have been more dedicated to that one mm. thing. So when you're gonna go into natural mode, you might think in your head, oh, I'm gonna do this, this, this with my child.'" But you've still got a function, you've still got to make money, you still like you go to work, isn't it? You can't be that and it's I assume you've got more than one, so you've got to then dedicate your time yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And what I worry about is that my mum was very pro education and that was always at the front of my mind. My mum was very anti men, anti child like children when you're a child, as in like teenage pregnancy, and very pro education and like things like that really have affected me and I put way too much of a kind of um Emphasis. Emphasis on education, which the ed- education is in going to university, getting a degree, if not better, PhD, masters. When it's not right for me, it never was right for me because of for, your path for, was different. Yeah, my path was different. But it was such like it was it was the centre of my family was education. But then <coughs> you came from a single parent family like mm-hmm. I did, so it's different. The dynamics different. Mm-hmm. Our moms are doing everything on their own, twenty four hours a day. That's why you know. For me personally, I don't want to have children until I'm married because then at least there's a balance there. So mm. where one of us is, you know, mm. where one of us is tired or is not on it or is mm. needs a break, the other person picks up the slack. When it's oh, one shit. woman, or in our, in our case, our mum's the whole time, mm. when they go into natural mode or when they're tired or when their you work is stressing more. them, mm. what, am I, what else am I going to see? Whereas mm. if there was a dad around, do you know what I mean? You away from that. They'll work in tandem. That's very true. So that's why, for me personally, that's why I always, I, I don't want to have It's so strange, I never thought of it like that, actually, because it is your parents going to natural mode, like coping mode, like getting through the day or being able to make money or just kind of like doing mm. the house stuff. So you see them... Everything. Everything. You see the whole spectrum. when there's two of them, yeah. they're less... Mm-hmm. themselves should yeah. we say and less par- and like less parenty if they're having to do it 24 7 because think about yeah. it if, if you were married and you were feeling stressed mm-hmm. and your child was there and you were feeling stressed about something and you were like oh and then your husband might be like oh, mm-hmm. you know what i mean whatever not in front of or whatever or mm-hmm. what's wrong let me let's talk about it and it changes the mood mm-hmm. but there's no one there when you're on your own mm-hmm. you're stressed you're stressed your child's getting that stress i felt that stress many times mm-hmm. Came from the back of her hand, came from yeah. her foot. She gave me headbutt. She used to give me E Honda. She used to put me in the corner of the room and give me E Honda headbutts from the other side. What? You know what you E Honda is? That Stand is on one side of the room and just fly Your overhead. Your mum never did that. What do you mean? Ask it. my mum. Your mum never funny, flew though. with her head into you. Yeah, well, she might as well have. She used to beat butt. So she didn't. Don't <laughs> but I swear you that. You've been like six foot six. She was seven. Yeah, yeah, she didn't care. Put me in the corner and say, Stand there and go, Goof, quit. And just flying towards me. Okay. No, but yeah, so you know, these are the things you've got to think about. People don't think about this when it comes to, you know, relationships and kids and marriage. All these things you've got to take into consideration, man. Even down to naming your child, man. Oh, don't get me started. Naming on that, your man. child. No, but it's the truth, though, man. Like, I, everyone's got ideas of names that they want to have. You ain't even got a. You're not even. You ain't even got. A, uh, I'm a bit of a bigot when it comes to names. In what sense? Like. There's a lot of names that I don't like, and I have to bite my tongue. One of my best friends, her sister, got really upset once. I hope she doesn't need this. She got really upset because <laughs> I part. As soon as she told me the names, I just passed in judgment. I don't like that because they're there. They're like this, they're like that. And then she was like, "That's it. I'm not telling anyone my names. I knew this would happen." And I was like, "You know, when someone's getting proper emotional," and yeah. I was like, it "Didn't even like occur to me to even 
think that you would care. But it's, like, so it is personal, it. though. It is. But with me, I feel I have to carry on my name. Your own name. Your yeah, and my, you don't say I'm a narcissist. And you don't say I'm vain. Listen to this guy. Carry on my name. No, but it's, it's, because, it's not no because... No one remember It's not name. my name. It's a family name. Yeah. Kemo Tarawali is a chief oh, member well, then I'm in my family. Them, for sure. It's a chief member of my family. So I want that to carry on. Anyway. Honestly, as long as I, as long as one of my children is called Kemo, I don't care so what the gonna, others are called. He's going to be called Junior then? No, 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 no Junior. One's well, going to be called Kemo and the other one's going to be right. Kemo, Alistair and Facundo. I'm, I'm, I'm actually not joking, I want mine. But guess who my favourite would be? Yeah. Yeah. Fukundo, no, that's a sick name. There's this woman at our work called Kiara, and she said to us, oh, I really like her name. She's like, Me too. She's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it strange that I'd want to call my child it? And I was like, Me too! Oh, these narcissists. I love my name. I really, uh, as I was, when I was growing up, I wanted to be called Vanessa. When I was in primary <laughs> school, I really was you like, are I must so, be you're called not a Vanessa. Because no, you, you kind of look like a Vanessa. I think it was her from um, The Cosby Show. I was thinking that. Yeah, was. I think it must be The Cosby Show or that other one, you know, Mr. Cooper. Hanging Hanging Mr. Cooper. Oh, it was yeah. one of them. It was um, Mr. Cooper. Well, I'm, like, I'm not even going to talk about what I wanted to do. It was Mr. Cooper. So I was like, I want to be called Vanessa. But as I've gotten older, you know, I've got a little bit of obsession with being unique. Like, I think it's because, you know, being the only brown child in the family and stuff. I like, I don't like there being another one of me, like I was yeah. saying earlier. Like, so now that my name is like completely unique, there's no one with my name. I think that's the best thing. I want my daughter to have that without there's... having an off key name. I don't know any names that like, no one, I don't know anyone called Morgana. You used to call your daughter Kemo. <laughs> that's pretty unique. <laughs> I don't know why she you guys are gonna meet anybody with the same name. Okay. I don't know why you guys are ignoring Facundo. What's wrong with Facundo? No, I like it. But I'm not I'm not Latin. So Facundo Tarawali. Facundo. Let's say that. Facundo. Facundo. Listen though, but I'm not gonna give my son my name. That's way too much pressure. I'm way too great. If my son oh, had my name, he's gonna feel the pressure. Oh. That's walking into a room, they're like, you're Sole son. I told you he'll instantly be a junior. But what about the day when your child surpasses you by miles and you are no longer known as Sule Jarami? I'll be old your by then. Your son is known as Sule Jarami. Yeah, I'll be proud then because then he's earned it because the, the things I'm going to do, man, he's going to have to do like, great stuff to surpass like, me. This is like Bob Marley. Like, they didn't want to know him yeah. as Marley and then all of a sudden he became Marley. The Marley. Yeah. The he, Marley. He's the one who put the name in the world. Marley, exactly. Yeah. He'll be like that and you'll be like... <laughs> But names. We should go see his family. They're only from down the road, aren't they? <laughs> Thamesmead. What? Who? Isn't his dad from like Thamesmead? No. Nah. Are you sure? Yeah. They're from the West. Well, they're not from the West Indies because they're white. His dad was in the army. He was in the army, wasn't he? But he was from Thamesmead. No. I'm telling you, yeah. Nah, this guy. <laughs> That's a lie. Do you know what? After my John Candy stat. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, this guy's been so <laughs> much. <laughs> I'm it's, 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 been, it's been a long, long it's, it's been a long day. Are you sure it was Bob Marley? Are you sure it wasn't Facundo Marley? Nah, you like, you like mugging me. Facundo Marley. Alright, but look, names are important, man. Listen, I'm Okay, I've got a question then. Yeah. Right. One of my godson. He's got blonde hair and blue eyes. His dad's mixed race like me, but he's got blonde hair and blue eyes. You're mixed race? Shut up. I know. A lot of people don't know Dia. me. Dia. Yeah, I'm actually mixed race. Yeah. Um, and his surname, I won't say it, but it's a really hardcore Nigerian name. Like that. And you've got this blonde haired blue eyed boy running around with this hardcore name. I think it is the best thing. The question is would you name your son or your daughter something that is doesn't really fit their look, and I mean like culturally, like. But what do you mean? Would you call your daughter Alice? How am I gonna know? Alice. I don't know what they're gonna look like. Alice they'll be. Durami. They'll be a day old when they come when I name them, so they're gonna look like a baby. All babies look the same, just different but would tones. You, would you get a name that was of a different culture? Uh, from my own. Like, uh, probably not. Only because I like the names in my culture, but if I didn't, then I didn't see. I wouldn't see anything wrong with it. I mean. Would you call your children after English names? Nah, probably not. Because I don't, I don't have an English name, and no one in my family has English names. Really? So, I'll, but they do. But well, our mums have English names. Yeah, but so. yeah, but that's because. But they're old. They're kind of old school English. And then names. they've all got. But then my mum's got a Syrian name as well. Yeah, just, I mean, mm. so well, I don't she's know. More known by as well. So. Okay. Exactly. So just say you have children to a white woman. 
Then what are you going to name your children? What if she's white Sierra Leonean? She's not. She's straight white from the British. The, from Yorkshire. <laughs> yeah, that's a farmer. Bayek. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm. I still. I st I'm still. I still want to hold on to those names, man. The name, like I said, the names are important. So I don't know. I, I can't. I can't imagine my my sons. Your your children are supposed to, you know. Be a representation of yourself. So you wouldn't call them Simon Durami? Nah, I can't. Does that even son. sound right to you? Like Simon never... Durami? Yeah. No, no. My son's are definitely. But sometimes, have... like my godson, he's got a regular, not a regular name, he's got a regular ish name and then a hardcore Nigerian name. It's a good balance then. It's like, I like, like that juxtaposition away. So then. But if you think about it, what are names? Then, if someone said to me Durami, I would never be like, oh, that's African. I would be like, that's. I've never heard that surname ever before. It's Italian. Durami, yeah, I can I, see that. Um, no, but your names are just to identify where you came from, aren't they? But I think that's so important. But I, I didn't cut, my name is Arthurian. I'm not from the Arthurian Yeah, I know, time. but that's what I mean. The original purpose is to know that you hear someone's name, you know he's from that tribe or from right. that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you okay, see what I mean? Okay, okay. So I, I, I like the idea and I think, obviously over time people have more choice and people have mixed cultures. So and you're going to name all your children Sarah Leone names? Well, yeah, I mean, I think so. I think so. Because I, I, it just points you in the straight in the direction of, you know that, you know, these, child have, these children have links there somewhere. So I think yeah, it's but good. but their mum's from Yorkshire. You can't deny that but, side. Uh, let's be honest, I'm probably not going to marry someone from, from Yorkshire, so... You don't know that. I do know that. I have a choice. It's up to me what I do. <laughs> Yorkshire, you're out of bounds. I'm sorry, you know, Yorkshire. I'm sorry, Yorkshire. No <laughs> chance. No chance. <laughs> from Yorkshire, you've got no chance. Little girls no going to chance. bed crying No, tonight. I'm joking. I hear what you're saying. This is... But then, this is an important thing about when you say, you know, everyone likes to fall in love and just get with someone picking your partners. These are the issues that people will go through, you know. Like, if I did get with someone from Yorkshire mm. who was British, and had strong, you know, that you could trace their lineage back to, uh, I don't know, so the old what English time times. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? We would have to have this, this discussion because she, she'd want to hold on to her route. Just like a couple of my friends got married recently, and I was having discussions with some of my friends. I was like, I, you know, what would you do if your wife, you got married and your wife wanted to keep her maiden name or mm. do a double barrel? How would you feel about it? And like myself personally and some of my other friends were like, mm, there's no chance, man. You change that name. You you part of my you family. Change you, that, name. that name is wiped out. It's Why are you saying gone. you're part of my family? No. Well, you know this is the way of the world. You know what James? What did James Brown? You know he said it, man. <laughs> what did he say? It's a man's world. Whatever. Forget the second part where he said it wouldn't be nothing. <laughs> exactly. He was a bit drunk on the second part. <laughs> <laughs> you know he has to get drunk. <laughs> but no, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Times are changing a lot, but I think a lot of traditions should stay That's steadfast. That's true. When I asked it to one of my friends, oh, we. I love, as I said, I love my name. I want to keep that surname forever, to be fair. And I can't imagine, I'll, I'll be sad on the day I get married just because I know I'll be losing my surname. But I said to my friend, I might double barrel it. A lot of people double barrel these days. So I might double barrel it. She was like, no, I'm going to, it's not right. You won't be married if you do that. You wouldn't. If my I wife. Like, I thought that's an archaic way of thinking. I don't think anyone even thought like that anymore. Listen, if my wife wanted to double barrel, wanted to double barrel my surname, mm. I'm going to have another wife. I'm having two then. It's fair. <laughs> you having two names, I'm having two wives. Balance. Yeah, man, what do you mean? Back double barrel. Right? What is this? It's a man's world. And on that note... <laughs> that awkward note that no one is joining in on. On that note, I think we'll wrap up for the day. No. Guys, anything to say in closing? Double barrel's all good. Bob Marley's dancing up from the table. <laughs> that was just jokes. No, he's, he's getting scared right. now. Everyone go and check that and email us cussing them because it wasn't, you know, that was a lie. But check out for Kundo Mali while you're at it though. Shout out to one of our members who's not here. Morocco! Getting sun, getting brown. He's going to come back looking like Sean Paul. We miss you. <laughs> I had a Moroccan dip from Marks and Spencer's today and I thought of you. He's going to come back looking like an ambassador. <laughs> I thought of you in Morocco while I had a Moroccan dip. At his Moroccan style. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks for listening. Whoever was listening, all two of you or two hundred of you, whoever was twenty-four of you. <laughs> Remember, this is um, therapy session number two with the coup. You can get us at e our email address is the real coup. That's coup spot c o u p at gmail.com YouTube page is the coup London. Twitter is at the real coup. Tumblr the real coup and lastly Instagram is the underscore coup. 
So session two, thanks for listening. One last note, we're Jungian, not Freud. Okay. I'm going to say something stupid, so forgive me. Before we get into it, just want to let you know, if you want to get through to us, if you want to send us any questions or requests or have any topics you want to discuss with us or just to shout out us or to disagree with anything we're saying, you can get at us at on our email address, which is therealcoo, this coo spelled C-O-U-P, so that's therealcoo at gmail.com. We've also got a YouTube channel, so you can listen to all of our podcasts on there, and it's um, the Coo London. We've got a Twitter page, of course, which is at the real, uh, yeah, at the real coup. Sorry about that. And then our Tumblr page, which is therealcoup.tumblr.com. And lastly, our Instagram, which is the underscore coup. Get through to us, people. Let us know how you're feeling. Let us know what you think. Cuss us. Do whatever. Just communicate with us. Right. Tell your friends about us. Tell us about this phantom in Sierra Leone. Yeah. So listen. So <laughs> <laughs> in Sierra Leone, right, they have some next. It's like. It's orange Fanta, but it's, it's not orange, it's like dark, it's deep orange, it's so sweet. It's because it's made from sugar cane. Listen, you get so addicted to that. I was popping them bottles like, every, I had like, <laughs> I was having 10 a day, no lie, it's cheap. It's like 15p or whatever, buy it from the little corner shack, back it. So I've been, I was backing these Fantas hard. <laughs> every day I was my alcohol, everyone was buying stouts and all them kind of <laughs> It's just it's, it's beer, beer. It? So I was backing these fanners, getting the little girls, my little cousins, to go out to the shop to buy me. Give them these girls, yeah. Random girls. Random girls. Random girls. <laughs> you or dead. That's true. <laughs> Unless their family gets wiped out in the meantime, which could happen. Diana stuff. I think Harry should be king, person. I think that's the truth. <laughs> Harry is the king. I think that is the truth. Oh, that's It'll be amazing. It'll be like, what's the what's the what's the film? What the King's speech? No, 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 no. Is it with John Candy where he becomes king? I don't know. Hmm? Hmm? Did I just make that up? Sounds like it. What's it called? You know, sometimes when you have those really kind of vivid dreams and then you think they're actually like. <laughs> a yeah, film but that's random. That's John Candy. Yeah, yeah, and he becomes a king mm-hmm. or a prince or something. I'm sure. I'm going to Google it. I'm not kingpin. That's the guy <laughs> from Cool Runnings, right? Yeah, yeah. Do, Uncle instead. Buck. Yeah. Oh, Uncle Buck. Yeah. That no, was really good. I don't remember this film, man. But anyway. If Harry was king, it'd be, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think I think we'd probably go to war only because some countries or some delegates or some ambassadors would be sending Harry messages and he wouldn't reply to nothing. He'll be off somewhere, <laughs> some skiing with some ting somewhere, and then they'll just think it's beef and just send some I don't know some missiles over. Harry something. does get ting. Changing subject. Yes. Would you allow? Right, I read this thing actually. My mum posted it on Facebook. I'll probably paste it on my Facebook because she wrote from Facebook on a regular basis. Yeah. To the point where my brother who's in Korea has actually blocked her. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, she posts this thing about McDonald's saying that they wash their meat with ammonia. <sighs> so my question is, it's always the number one thing with girls. Would- <laughs> Yeah, people. <laughs> session two is in. <laughs> Why is everyone so quiet? All right, session two of therapy is here with the coup. Hello. Everyone say hello. Hi guys. Hello. Listen, every time we start, I do not, I do not know what to say. So you got to tell him we're a man down. Yeah, a man down today. Just three of us in there today. So the coup is a man down. But we're still fighting. I send some special love to Hammer because he wasn't actually feeling well. Although he is away, he has actually been feeling a bit sick. So <laughs> I don't feel too sorry for him. He's on holiday. He's in sunny Morocco. Yeah, but he's sick. He... What were you like when we were in Sierra Leone and you got stomachache? Was it your stomachache? In Sierra Leone. I just dropped a few hot ones and I was ready to go. Oh, allow it. These right? hot ones are But hot. you have to drop hot ones in the dark, not electric, with <gasps> candle. So you could, you could like burn your True. pubes or something. You Why know? would you have the camera that close to you? <laughs> By accident! <laughs> yeah, because you're going! Because the camera no, to my Do you know what though? In Sierra Leone, they had, that, they had some next fan out. That's why I had. That's why I was on the toilet. <laughs> the they got some cake. next fan It's not. It's because it's of the sugar. Well, you cake. took fan to the toilet? No, no, no. I was just. <laughs> I'm to say one thing. Have you actually introduced us? Yes, yeah, so we're the crew. And this is therapy session two. Every week, or every time we have a session, 
I was supposed to introduce us, but I didn't know what to say. I just say something weird every time. So every time I you let your kid eat McDonald's, and like one of my friends who has a baby, well, a toddler, she was like, oh, he's had McDonald's twice this week. Is that really bad? Is that really bad, Morgan? And I was like, no, it's fine, isn't it? My nanny said it's McDonald's every Saturday with her, whatever we want. I ain't going to try to go into that because people are going to judge me on what my nanny sees. Anyway. Well, kid, it was the 80s, so it doesn't count. The 80s, the 90s. Okay, sorry. She got still below 10 having two extra value meals. But let's move on from that, please. <laughs> two extra value meals? <laughs> my nan just what do you mean, my two? My nan just didn't say no. Like, I'd be like, oh, can I have a chicken burger? And she'd be like, yeah, sure. I was probably like eight or nine. Yeah. And then she'd be like, sure. And then I'd finish the chicken burger. I'd be like, no, I'm so hungry, I want another chicken burger. She'd be like, okay then. And when we weren't having extra value meals, she'd then go and buy us the toys. Well. Hold on, so she just bought you the burger on its own? If I wanted the burger on its own. If I wanted a whole other meal, she'd have bought me a whole other meal. But then the cheek is that after that, I used to have, do you remember when they used to do like, um, it was like a tray, mm, and then yeah. you had the apple pie down the middle yeah, yeah, with the ice yeah. cream on each other. Yeah. With the, I used to have that after. You used to have a McDonald's TV dinners. Yeah, basically. Because my mum used to work like full time or yeah. seven days a week so we used to go to my nan's at the weekend and my nan just never said no God rest her soul you were lucky man. man I had to she work for my best. McDonald's I used to go to East Street Market with my mum she used to bribe me in the <laughs> morning the if you come yeah because I'd be watching cartoons I'd be watching uh, I don't even know man DuckTales or whatever it is Some she would like cats. yeah Tailspin all them ones yeah. oh, if you use, them. yeah she's like if you don't if you want to them change I was like go and get me two Fanta go and <laughs> come back back in it go and buy your own then, like, about a week in, man, I had, the, I had the worst tummy I've ever had. And, you know, when you're on holiday and you get sick, it's like, mm. you feel like you're really going to die. So I was out. And they were get, we used to go to this club called Old School. Big up everyone from Sierra Leone who's been to Sierra Leone. He's been free town. If you go to Sierra Leone and you don't go to Old School you or ain't, Paddy's, you, ain't, you been, ain't been to Sierra Leone. You ain't been to Sierra Leone. You ain't been free town anyway. I don't know. Yeah. I can't speak for any other cities, but I'm telling you. Those places, woo! It was jumping, the BO was strong, the booties were big. I loved it. I love it, man. We're not really, <laughs> we're not really <laughs> advertising. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no one's going to want to go. Dodgy stomach, BO, a booty. <laughs> but so, anyway, so everyone was going out to, I think they were going um, old school, one club. But I was finished, I was on the bed. They all went, I was so upset. Went to the toilet, dropped two twos. <laughs> Came out, I was ready to roll, That's man. That's when it comes out like the tap, isn't it? Yeah, it was oh, serious thing. Oh, allow me. <laughs> comes out anyway, you know. aside from my Fanta, um, this week, um, well, not even this week, recently, there's been some new new events happening, obviously. You know, we've got a real baby. George, I think his name is. I is think it's a real baby. I was like, someone got something to tell me. <laughs> no, Why are you looking at me? No. Royal baby. <laughs> is his name George, though? Yeah, it is yeah. George. George, George, new addition to the royal family. He's going to be our future king. You should know that kind of stuff. Who's king? I ain't going to... By the time he's king, I'm, I'm either going to 